My name is João Magueijo. I'm a cosmologist. <laughs> my job, my obsession, is to work out why everything works the way it does. For the past 20 years, I've been trying to make sense of the universe. In the process, I've been called an anarchist, a heretic, a radical, even a moron. Welcome to this crazy world. Hey, I know what happened at the beginning of time. I've spent most of my adult life trying to unlock the secrets of the universe. Attempting to uncover the forces controlling billions of galaxies. This investigation of time and space is called cosmology. Cosmology is physics on a mind-bogglingly large scale. The scale of the entire universe. As such, it has to answer some radical questions. Why are we here? Where are we going? Where did all this come from? To these questions, modern cosmology replies with two words. Big Bang. The Big Bang theory is the cornerstone of cosmology. A landmark attempt to explain how the cosmos came into being. Yet, there are still mysteries at the very heart of it that send shockwaves through the scientific world. In its simplest form, the Big Bang model suggests that the universe came into being in an unimaginably hot and dense state and has been expanding and cooling ever since. The Big Bang theory not only explains how the universe began, but why it behaves the way it does right now minute by minute, second by second. We cannot produce little big bangs in the laboratory. And we were not there to see it happen. However, cosmologists are confident that it did take place because faint echoes from these initial moments still linger on in the current universe. To understand how these echoes were produced, we have to rewind time 13 billion years to the beginning of everything, back beyond the formation of the Earth four and a half billion years ago, beyond the 10 billion year lifespan of a third generation star like our Sun, back to the zero hour when time and space began. Now the search can begin for the origins of those Big Bang echoes. It all started 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang. That's a decimal point, 42 zeros, and a one. A period of time so minute, we don't have the technology to measure it. At this time, the temperature was 10 to the 32 Kelvin that's zillions of times hotter than the heat given off by a supernova. When a dying star goes supernova, it can radiate as much energy in a few weeks as our sun would emit in 10 billion years. But that is only a tiny fraction of the temperature of the early universe. At such incredibly high temperatures, matter is really dense, is very concentrated, so that there's no way light can get away from its influence. It's imprisoned inside matter. The energetic photons of light are trapped amongst the densely packed particles of matter with no means of escape. Everywhere the photons turn, matter blocks their path. The young universe is completely opaque. No light can escape from it. 
It's just like what happens, say, inside the sun. The sun is a huge sphere made almost entirely of the gases hydrogen and helium, more than one million kilometers in diameter. But even though it consists of gas and little else, the sun's interior is opaque. You can't see through the sun because the temperature inside is so high and matter is so concentrated that light is trapped inside it. What you really see is the surface around it where the temperature drops sufficiently that light suddenly is free and can travel towards us. Exactly the same processes were at work in the early universe. For 375,000 years, light was trapped inside matter. But as the universe aged, as it became cooler, eventually the temperature dropped below 3,000 Kelvin, when the density of matter is no longer sufficiently high to trap the light. At last, the light could escape the matter. And then, suddenly, there was this big burst, this tremendous burst of free light. The first free light in the universe. In fact, so intense was this burst that this light should still be around, carrying with it information. Secrets from the very earliest stages of the universe. But if this primordial light is still around, why can't we see it? All we see is darkness, dotted by stars. Even if we get a telescope, all we see is more darkness, dotted by more stars, and things like galaxies, clusters of galaxies. With no trace of that all-important first burst of light from the Big Bang, the theory seems to have fallen at the first hurdle. So much for the Big Bang. What has happened to this missing light? And what does it mean for the Big Bang Theory? If the Big Bang really did take place, the first dazzling burst of light it produced should still echo around the universe. But however far we look out into the night sky, we simply cannot see this primordial light. How can that be? Is this the Big Bang Theory's fatal flaw? Well, not quite. The key for finding something is knowing how to look for it. At this point, it might be useful to think of light as shrimps. Why not? Shrimps are just as much part of the universe as stars or galaxies, subject to the same basic physical forces and laws. As far as I'm concerned, there's no aspect of cosmology that can't be explained by everyday things around us. Shrimps, like this one, come from a large family of crustaceans. At one end of the scale, you get half-meter-long lobsters. At the other, you get tiny krill. All built on the same model, all 